This is the Bhagavad Gita priced at 40 rupees. This is a pocket sized Hanuman Chalisa priced at only 5 rupees. This is the Durga Saptashati in Kannada priced at just 25 rupees. This is the Sundarakand from the Tamil Kambaramayana selling for only 40 rupees. So what do these books have in common? Well, they are all Hindu religious texts and sell for really low prices. But that's not all. All of these are published by the same publishing house Gita Press Gorakhpur. You might have heard of Gita Press as it was in the news recently as the government of India awarded it the Gandhi Peace Prize. But if you look around your homes, you will find at least one book or the other from this publishing house. But why is this a big deal? It's just another publisher like any other, right? Actually, no. Gita Press Gorakhpur was founded in the early 1920s when India was still under the grips of British rule. It is the world's largest publisher of Hindu religious literature. Over the past 100 years, Gita Press has sold over 41.7 crore religious books in over 14 languages at unimaginably low prices without any aggressive sales tactics or marketing. And yet, Gita Press has the highest brand recall value. There's a Ramayan or Mahabharat or Bhagavad Gita from Gita Press in almost every Hindu household. But that's not the only reason why Gita Press is such a big deal. Let's go back to the year 1922. World War I had ended four years ago and India was witnessing the rise of the revolutionary movement against British rule. Jay Dayal Goenka was a Marwadi businessman living in Bankura in the then Bengal presidency. He along with his friends, other businessmen and traders held satsangs reading and discussing the Bhagavad Gita, Sri Krishna's battlefield discourse to the Pandava prince Arjuna, but they lacked an authentic translation of the text along with a faithful commentary. Tikavali Gita, one of the earliest Hindi translations of the Gita, was banned by British authorities for its influence on revolutionaries. So Goenka attempted to print the Gita at a press in Kolkata, but he found errors in the printing. The printers advised him to get his own press if he wanted an error-free copy, and that is how Gita Press was born. Gita Press was established on 29 April 1923 in Gorakhpur in what is now Uttar Pradesh. Apart from Goenka, another man needs to be credited for the success of Gita Press and that is Hanuman Prasad Poddar. Poddar was the founding editor of Gita Press and its monthly journal Kalyan which was started in 1926. He was associated with revolutionary groups like the Anushilan Samiti in Bengal and as a young 24-year-old, he had been arrested by the British government in 1960 for his alleged role in the Rodda arms robbery case. The weapons from this arms heist were distributed across India and would later be used by revolutionaries like Chandrasekhar Azad, Bhagat Singh, Dash Bihari Bose and Bagha Jatin. Poddar had very close relationships with Sri Aurobindo, Madan Mohan Malaviya and Rajinder Prasad. The magazine Kalyan carried this revolutionary streak in the colonial era days. The 1920s was also a time when Christian missionaries were making rapid progress in converting Hindus. As evangelist missionaries handed out Bibles like hot cakes and while every Christian household had a copy of the Bible at home, except for a few pundits who were specialists in the field, an ordinary Hindu did not have any printed copy of any Hindu texts. Witnessing this, Goenka believed that popularization of Gita and other texts in Hindi was important to counter the efforts of Christian missionaries. But it wasn't just the missionaries. The Khilafat movement was also on the rise and was patronized by Mahatma Gandhi. Hindu society was also undergoing a churn. While many believed that India should embrace English education and let go of its ancient civilizational ethos for the sake of modernity. A section of intellectuals thought that modernity had corroded India's values. Hindi was increasingly seen as a language for Hindus as opposed to Urdu or Persian. Gita Press recognized the opportunity that print provided to take the message of Sanatan Dharma to the hinterland in Hindi through its magazine Kalyan and the inexpensive but high-quality mass-produced editions of Ramayan, Gita, Mahabharat, Puranas and other Hindu texts. Recognizing the power of oral tradition, Gita Press organized Gita and Ramayan Sabhas that would regularly hold recitations throughout the country. Katha Vachaks would sing and popularize the Ramcharit Manas in the remotest of villages. Texts like these are an integral part of the Hindu traditions and Gita Press ensured that they were accessible to all sections of society, not just in India but in all parts of the world. To reach out to the non-Hindi speaking public, especially the Hindu diaspora in the West and former British imperial outposts, Gita Press launched the English language journal 
Kalyan Kalpataru in 1934. Gita Press thus influenced many Western scholars and Orientalists who were interested in studying Hinduism and Sanskrit. Even after independence, Gita Press has continued to speak up for Hindu issues such as the cow protection movement in the 1960s or the Ayodhya Ram Janmabhumi and Mathura Krishna Janmabhumi movements. Today, Gita Press makes almost 50,000 books every day. From becoming a voice to counter the damaging ways in which British rule was impacting Hindu society and culture to making Hindu texts accessible to everyone, Gita Press continues to thrive in this day and age of ebooks and PDFs.